All right, so we've talked about bodies, we talked about forms very briefly, and now I want to get into sketching. And again, I'm keeping these things brief so that it's just giving you a quick overview, and then as we go into sketching, that's going to tie a little bit more into bodies. We'll play around a little bit more body options as well as forms. So sketching, to me, is one of the coolest things about Fusion and one of the, like I keep saying, one of the heavy, heavy lifters of this program. So to get into sketching, let's go ahead and um, we can, there's a couple different ways to turn off bodies. You can click this light right here and that'll turn off all your bodies in your scene or, or you can keep bodies on and you can click these two off so depending on how complex your scene gets you can do either one of those so another thing we can do is turn off construction so and when we had construction we made that point we don't need to really see that I'm gonna go ahead and turn construction off as well as if you want to turn off the origin that just turns off those work planes now occasionally you're gonna turn this stuff off and you're gonna create something and it's gonna yell at you and say hey you just created something but you can't see it because you have you know if you create a new body and you have bodies turned off it'll create the body for you you just won't be able to see it because you have it turned off so just you know FYI a little warning pops up you just need to go over here and turn on visibility so let's talk a little bit about sketching um, sketch menus up here so we've got modeling or the create menu how to modify what you've created and then you've got sketching here assembly we'll get into when we get to joints so Let's go to sketch. So if you click this sketch button here, you can got create sketch. And I create sketch a lot, so I'm going to go ahead and just move that to the top here. Um, this line, uh, this line is here by default, so you can go ahead and just create a line. And because the line has a hotkey of L, I'm going to go ahead and remove that because I don't really um, use line without hitting L a lot. Um, but one thing I do use a lot that doesn't have a hotkey, for example, would be say we go to this three point arc. Three point arc doesn't have a hotkey, I'm going to go ahead and move that to the top. So just keep in mind that you can go ahead and rearrange these things. You can move these things around if you'd like. Um, you can add, remove, rearrange things um, to your toolbar. So anyways, sketching. So let's go ahead and create sketch. I'm just going to click that button. And just like when you were creating bodies, it's going to want you to create create a sketch along a work plane. Now, by default, the work plane is just going to be these origin work planes. Um, if you have construction work planes created, which we'll get into later, you can do that. If you have a body sitting there, if we turn our box back on, you can create, and we've got to turn bodies back on, uh, you can create a sketch on any one of these things. Um, to just talk about the basics of sketching at first, I'm going to go ahead and just turn that off, and we'll just create a sketch right on this bottom work plane. So it's going to go ahead and snap us to the top camera view, and we're in sketch mode. So just like when we were in form mode, and it was like, hey, you need to click finish form before you can go out of form mode and go back into modeling, um, we're in sketch mode. So in order to get out of sketching, we have to click stop sketch when we're done. So just something to keep in mind. Uh, so sketching. So here's our sketching options. The most obvious one is lines. I'm just going to, if you had this up here, you can click the button or you can click L or you can go in this menu and click line. And also, if you roll over these, you're going to see the options for, you know, it kind of tells you what it is, gives you a little visual example. So a line. So if I click in here, it's going to be snapping to my grid. If for any reason you don't want it to, and I would suggest keeping this on as much as possible. The only time I ever really turn this off is when I'm doing spline stuff. Um, but you can do incremental move. You can turn that off under your grid snapping options. And you can also turn off uh, snap to grid and here's your grid settings uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and leave that on for now so let's go ahead and sketch a line so I click and drag and that'll go ahead and snap it it'll give you a dimension if you want to type in a dimension just type in 130 and that'll give you 130 millimeters if you want to do 130 plus 50 it'll do oops not underscore 130 plus 50 let's see if I can do this there we go it'll give you 130 plus 50 which is 180 and you can go ahead and enter and it'll ask you, you know, do you want it 90 degrees? And that's fine. So I go ahead and hit enter again. And that'll give you a 180 degree line with a dimension sketch out here uh, with a 90 degree angle. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and undo that. And I'm going to click L to make another line here. So now it's line selected. I'm going to click and then stop. And then I'm going to go over this way and I'm going to stop. I'm going to go up this way. Now, if I want to make sure this is the exact same as this one. It's easy on in this case because I can actually see that that's that grid line. Um, however, if I click, if I, I don't click, if I go over here and hover over this one and then pull out, you're going to see it has a blue line connected. That comes in handy a lot when you're off grid or when you want to have another sketch um, or object that you're pulling information from to go ahead and snap it equal to that distance. So you know when you click and you go over this way, it's going to go right onto that point. Now that I've created a closed sketch what that does is give me a little orange area that's something I'll be able to create with later I can do a push pull and create a form I can do a push pull and cut through all sorts of cool stuff so just something to keep in mind we put our three-point arc in here so I'm gonna go ahead and do that I'm just gonna click three-point arc and what a three-point arc is is I can click one point and I can click a second point and then as I click my third point that's gonna create an arc so I can just go and it's going straight from the middle here I can go out to the side but because these are two 
equally distant things. As I pull this out, it's just going to create a pretty even arc. So I'm going to go ahead and click. And because this is another closed form, it's going to go ahead and turn that orange as well. Now, if you want to clean this up a little bit, uh, you can click T for trim, or you can go over here to sketch, and you can turn on trim, and you can actually trim any of these lines. You can get rid of this line if you don't like it. Um, let's go ahead and undo that. Uh, or you can trim the center, uh, this little line here out, so you can click T and get rid of that. Now, when we get into really complicated sketches, you're going to see where trim is going to come in handy to kind of keep things clean. Um, this shape was easy and simple enough to where you probably didn't have to do that, but just wanted to make sure you knew where that was. So another thing that did was actually give you a little center point here. And you're also going to notice, as I was creating that line, it gave us a little bit of constraint. So if you go over here to your sketch palette, you're going to notice you've got a couple little different uh, constraint options here. So if you want to create two lines that are equal, you can make sure those are uh, clicked over here, two parallel lines. So we'll get into this as we uh, do a little bit more complex sketching later on. So we've got this thing here. Let's go ahead and go up here to sketch. Then we'll go to circle, and we'll do center diameter circle, which you'll see the hotkey for that is C. I'm going to click that, and it looks like it gave us a center point here. So if I click that and drag out, you're going to see that arc actually created a center point for us. So if we wanted to make a circle right here, and we could actually snap the circle to that line, we can go ahead and click that, and that will give us a circle in here. If we want to offset that circle, I can go in here to Sketch Offset, and you're going to see the hotkey for that is O. So I can click this circle here, and then we can offset the circle down, and you can just keep clicking that. Now, if you want to, if you want to stop being in offset mode, you can hit escape or you can just click uh, another sketch option or any of the hotkeys for that. Now, at this point, if I want to stop my sketch, I can just click stop sketch here and it's going to go back out here into kind of the modeling view. Now, like I said before, you can go ahead and push and pull any of these features here. Now, each one of these areas that you roll over and kind of highlights, it's called a profile. So if you want to push and pull this entire outer shape, what you need to do is go through and select all of these profiles here. And you can see that actually was kind of a pain in the butt. If you want to, let's go ahead and underneath it, and you also notice as we, after we created that sketch, we have a new folder over here called Sketches. I can click that sketch, right click, go into Edit Sketch, and that'll take us right back into editing this sketch. Um, now, just to kind of clean this up a little bit, again, I'm going to go down here to Trim and get rid of these lines here so I don't have to select them. Um, these lines I'm going to use later, so I'm going to go ahead and keep those, but I am going to go ahead and trim this little bottom section out. Cool. So now that I'm done doing that, I can do stop sketch. And now when I go to pull this whole profile up, all I need to do is click three things instead of like seven. Now with all three of those selected, I can go here and I can click this push pull or it looks like push pull is Q is a hotkey or I can right click, do push pull, pull up a profile. You can give it a distance. Go ahead and uh, it's going to create a new body by default because nothing else is on the screen. However, if I bring back my previous bodies, um, you can use this you're going to see as I pull up and it intersects that one, it's going to go, oh, do you want to use this to cut? You can do that, or you can use it to join to that body. A lot of different things. We'll go ahead and change, change it to new body, and we'll turn our original cylinder off. And we'll just kind of pull that up a little bit. And we'll click OK. And now we've got a whole new body. Now, by default, it turned off that sketch you were just doing. If you want to turn that on, you can go ahead and turn that sketch back on. And let's say we want to use these original sketch lines to go ahead and pull uh, a hole up through our mesh. So what you need to do is go ahead and select that profile. Now, one thing you can do is actually like go to the bottom here and select that profile. It's a little bit easier, um, like so. Uh, another thing you can do is go to the top here, and you can hide the body, and then you can select that profile, and then you can bring the body back, and then you can do a push-pull, and that'll go ahead and cut through. Um, but another cool thing you could do is, you know, as you hover over this, it's going to want to select that top plane here. If you click and hold, it'll actually look through where your arrow is and it'll say, hey, do you want to select the face? Do you want to select the profile? Or do you want to select the bottom face? Because those are all underneath your selection arrow. So I'm going to go ahead and select profile. That'll select that profile for me. I can right click, do a push pull. And I can just pull this up and I'm good to go. Now remember, we can do an extents to, and I want to push pull up, do a cut operation to that face. So now, no matter what happens to this top face here, it'll always cut through to that. So if I go back here, so if I roll over this, this is our um, cutted, this is our cut um, extrusion. If I do this one, this was our original extrusion. If I right click this and do edit feature, I can go, you know what? I didn't actually want that to be 20. I wanted that to be 50. Hit OK, and it's going to go all the way back through your history, recalculate all those operations, do that cut again, and it'll say, hey, I cut through to this, ex this top extent, and because that changed, I'm going to continue cutting until I hit that extent.